Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to wherever in the world you are. I am Alicia, I am Pada's Youth Ambassador, and I'm so happy to pre be presenting to you today part four of our Youth Symposium for 2021, the Student Chapter Roundtable Discussion. So this is really uh, brings us to a close of our entire Youth Symposium, and we're going to spend today 
listening to our student chapter leaders from all over the world tell us what they've been up to and what passion projects they've been leading. For our student chapter roundtable discussion, we have a total of 26 out of 29 PATA student chapters from 18 countries around the world who will be speaking at this event today. Our student chapter leaders are representing themselves, their peers, their university, their student chapter, and their country on our international platform. This is a milestone for our community as the singers fullest representation of Pata student chapters around the world in one online event. So I'm very proud of each and every one of you today for the hard work that you've put into running student chapters during a global pandemic. You guys have done an amazing job. I know this and it's time now for our international audience in the Pata annual summit to also find out what you guys have been up to. We cannot wait to hear what you have to share with us today. So before we begin, some housekeeping announcements. Of course, we want to know who is watching. We want to know who is in the audience today. So please introduce yourself in the chat. Tell us where you're from. Tell us about your passions and goals for the tourism industry. We also get many frequently asked questions during our sessions. So please note that certificates of participants, uh, participation will be sent out to all attendees of the Pada Youth Symposium next week after the entire event is over. This webinar recording will also be made available soon on our Pata YouTube channel, which has just hit 1,000 subscribers. So everyone, if you like our events, if you want to be able to re-watch them on demand, please make sure to like and subscribe on our Pata YouTube channel. It's called Pata TV. I feel like a YouTube influencer saying that. Like and subscribe. Okay. So today's agenda, uh, I just wanted to share with you guys what we'll be doing today. Today is a slightly long meeting because we do have 26 student chapters who are going to do a two-minute presentation each um, uh, to tell us what they've been up to. And that is going to take literally one hour for us to make sure we cover everyone from around the world. Then we're going to have a break to stretch. And then we're going to go to best practices from sele selected student chapters. So our Pata Australia University of Queensland student chapter and our Pata Singapore Tamasic Polytechnic student chapter are going to share with us their best practices for handover, which is an issue that a lot of student chapters face and need to deal with. And so we're going to take this opportunity to learn from each other. Then right at the end, we will have a Q&A session. So if anyone has questions during the entire session, feel free to put them in the attendify chat as we go along throughout the entire session and we will get to them right at the end. So that's it for today's agenda. I want to take this opportunity to, of course, thank our Pada Youth sponsors. These are five organizations that have really come alongside us and supported the Pada Youth program throughout the entire pandemic. They are iFree, Guam Visitors Bureau, Map2 Ventures, Sigmund, and Talent Basket. So we love our Pada Youth supporters a lot and we absolutely um, love working with them. They have been uh, amazing sponsors for the Pada Youth Program. Thank you very much. So now it gives me great pleasure to welcome on stage Jiang Yu from Pata Australia University of Queensland UQ student chapter to give his two minute presentation. Jiang Yu, please. Hello everyone. Okay, I'm going to share my screen now. Just a moment. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Jiang Yu, and today I'm very glad to introduce you guys about Pata Australia University of Queensland student chapter. Our chapter was established in 2018, and we have been providing many social and professional opportunities for our student members by working closely with our local communities. Uh, we have a wonderful uh, team with a multicultural background, and we fully respected the um, cultural diversity to maintain a long-lasting global connections. And our mission is to enrich the campus life of students while bridging them with the industry professionals and the local community and the business. 
And here's some of our event highlights. Last, mo last month, we held this Clean Up Australia Day events while collecting and recycling the waste on campus. Um, this is going to increase the environment awareness among the UQ student community. And also we had on-site hotel tour and a seminar about job findings. And these are greatly helping students to reconnect to the job market and workplace in the post-pandemic world. And working closely with our student chapters, we co-created a tourism and like sustainable tourism a seminar with um, the professionals from the India Crest universities. And we also hosted, like most importantly, we host our events and activities uh, at local places to support local companies to revive from the uh, pandemic. And we also have lots of partnerships with local organizations and uh, Numenai to provide job, or job opportunities to our students. And in the near future, we are going to uh, relaunch our networking nights and host more seminars and uh, field trip studies. And we're also looking forward to more global collaborations with other student chapters. So if you guys are interested, do not hesitate to contact us. And that's all for me. Thank you. Amazing. And thank you so much, Jiangyu, for that presentation. Uh, next up, we have representing Pata Bangladesh Dhaka University student chapter, Musfit. Hello. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, greetings. Hello, everyone. Thanks for giving me the floor. This is Mushfiq Ahmed, the head of communication, presenting Pata Bangladesh Dhaka University student chapter. Every country has seen some hard times during this pandemic, but we choose to be optimistic and there are some true success. Let me share them with you. So our committee was announced on December 2020. Tamzid Hossein was selected as the chairperson and we got eight board members and 26 associate members. After that, we launched our recruitment uh, 2020, which was divided, divided in three assessment rounds. You can see on the screen, introduction, general member meeting and interview. Some industry experts and our alumni shared their thoughts about the chapter and how they used the platform to build their career was shared by them. After that, uh, we launched our general meeting 2020 to 21, which was a uh, took place on 7th December 2020, and we welcomed some brilliant and enthusiastic minds. Uh, we celebrated International Women's Day. Our female board members uh, shared a short speech on the day. Uh, the whole world is now based on digital marketing, so we collaborate with the Creative IT, one of the leading IT firm in Bangladesh, and uh, we came up with the topic, a future for advanced tourism. Uh, we celebrated Pohela Boishak due to pandemic, it was not possible to me physically meeting. So our associates uh, dressed up in Bengali attire and shared their thoughts virtually. Uh, our chairperson, uh, head of promotion and head of communication participated in sixth international tourism hospitality uh, students convention, which was organized by Pata Philippines University of Baguio and we collaborated with them. Even in this area, sexual assault is uh, not uh, decreasing. It's uh, in case increasing, and I think it's not only problem in our territory, but it's a worldwide problem. So the resistance uh, feminist network came up with the idea and we collaborated with them. Uh, we made some other celebrations, for example, birthday of Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, 7th March speech of Bangabundu, our Victory Day and our Independence Day, uh, International Mother's Language Day, Holy and Christmas. Uh, we will be, our upcoming events are Career Counseling Webinar on May 2021 and previous session two in June and August. Thank you all for your listening. Thank you. Musfik, thank you very much for that presentation. I love to see the type of topics that you guys are tackling. Very, very amazing. So next up, we have Alano from Pata Canada, Vancouver, Capilano University student chapter with us today. Hi, thank you so much, Alicia. I'm just gonna present this. So hi everyone, thank you for coming out. This is such a great turnout. Um, I'm representing the Canada Vancouver Capitalano University student chapter. I'll be talking a little bit about 
our chapter, our 2020-2021 recap, uh, any new initiatives that we have impacts and staying connected. So our chapter was established in 2017. It is Canada's only student chapter. Uh, our members are passionate about advocating for responsible tourism develop both development, both locally and internationally. My name is Alana. I'm a second year tourism management student. I'm also the chairperson of our student chapter. And I'm really excited to see the growth that we're, that's gonna be coming in the next year for our student chapter. So we really focus on community building, knowledge sharing, sustainability, responsible tourism de development, and youth empowerment. So during 2020, uh, due to the pandemic, we really had to shift the way that our chapter was operating. So we had to shift online completely. Uh, we were able to recruit new members, uh, we launched our new website, as well as creating a new independent platform for our podcast, which I'll talk a little bit about later. We hosted World Tourism Day alongside our student association uh, in September, completely online, as well as a sustainable travel webinar uh, with a speaker from Kentucky Tours as well, just this past March. And if any, anybody tuned in yesterday to the SDG workshop, our very own Kenneth Wonko had a very large hand in operating that. So for our podcast, it can be found on all platforms. Uh, we just completed season three and we'll be continuing that next year as well. So we're very excited. There's a link to that if you're interested. Uh, we'll be hosting another World Tourism Day. We have our another uh, continuing our podcast, continuing to grow that and just focusing on the SDGs. Uh, continuing our impact and hopefully uh, being able to get back on campus and having that hands on there. Here are our links as well. So please stay connected. And here's just that link again. So thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Elena. I think it's great that we've been able to travel in a few short minutes from Australia to Bangladesh to Canada. And next up, we are going to go to Hong Kong. So Hatha Hong Kong School of Hotel and Ekaterina, the stage is yours. Uh, yes. Good morning, good evening, uh, good night, everyone. So exciting. Greeting from Hong Kong. Yes, my name is Katerina. Yes, I'm a chairperson of our student chapter. And to briefly introduce all the activities we had and all of our board members, I'm going to show you a short video. Please enjoy. How does student chapter provide the unique opportunity to gain access to webinars, discussions, latest tourism trends, and of course, a unique opportunity to partner youth members? This year, Hong Kong Pata SHTM Students Chapter has successfully organized a number of activities, including co-hosting events with Pata headquarters, exclusive event for our SHTM students with the Vice President of Ohio, co-hosting the VR and Innovation event with the Vietnamese Pata Students Chapter and of course our annual members meeting. There are more exciting events to come. The exclusive event with Thai and Asian Pacific Senior Vice President. It was a very warm introduction with SHTM dear friend Leo Yen. It was also a very unique opportunity to chat with a successful hotel owner who was very generous to share his study and working philosophies. He also gave advice to students on career paths, job hunting, and interviews. During pandemic, very inspiring and helpful. Our social media activities include weekly sharing of part of our headquarters activities, board member introduction, and photo competition. We are the only part of student chapter in Hong Kong with more than 200 members. See you on board. Uh, yes, and this is it. I hope you enjoyed it. So yeah, all the best from Hong Kong. Thank you so much, Ekaterina. That was an amazing video. I absolutely loved it. So now we are going to go to Pata India Christ University student chapter represented by Priyana.
Hi everyone, thank you so much for the opportunity given to us today. We are a newly formed chapter and I am Prerna Hatyal, the current chairperson of our student chapter. I hope my screen is visible. Yeah. Greetings from the land of food, festival and lots of colors. Hi. 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 Pata India Christ University student Looks like I'm having some screen sharing troubles. So with technology, that's bound to happen. But in a nutshell, we are a family of more than 200 members. And what keeps us going is that each one of us take a holistic approach to make this chapter a lot better. So that is it from my side. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prerna. I'm sorry you had screen sharing troubles, uh, but please feel free to share the link of that YouTube video with us and then we can put it in the chat so that everyone can watch the video later. So thank you very much, Prerna. Um, good recovery, by the way. Next up, we're going to go to Indonesia. So Bagus is representing Pata Indonesia Bali Tourism Polytechnic student chapter. Bagus, please turn on your camera and mute yourself and welcome on stage. Um, hi everyone, so let me turn on my camera, if there is, um, oh no, um, I'm still having a video problem, but I'm still getting back on it. Can we just continue to the next one? Um, yeah, sure. So, Bagus, we'll come back to you after Lalu's presentation. So, Absolutely. Lalu, Lalu from, uh, Lalu representing Pata Indonesia Lombok Tourism Polytechnic student chapter. Could you please join us and take it away? Okay, thank you, Aletia. First, let me share my... Well, hi everyone. I'm Zul, the representative of Lomok Tourism Polytechnic Pada student chapter. We actually have a many kind of program, which are short-term program, mid-term program, and long-term programs. But the impactful program that uh, we have done are Gallant Corner and Eco Enzyme. Both of these programs included into our long-term programs. Gallon Corner as an effective campaign in producing plastic waste. Gallon Corner engages students to use a recyclable bottle and stop buying mineral water with plastic packages. The aim of this program is to keep the environment from the plastic waste that could give a massive damage for the environment. And the second one is Eco Enzyme. This program is also commonly called Garbage Enzyme a multi-purpose liquid from fermentation or organic waste. Lalu, so sorry, let me pause you right there. There's a little bit of echo and your presentation is not full screen. Do you want to maybe turn off the sound and then try again from Eco and Time, I think. Turn off the sound and then try again from Eco and Time, I think. So maybe mute uh, the screen that is playing the sound. Uh, Come back online, unmute yourself. Let's try this again. Hi, is that clear? Hello? Hi, yeah. Why don't you share your screen with us again and take it away? Okay, so sorry. Let me try. No problem. Is that okay? I think I, I got a problem with my connection. Yeah. Uh, it's okay, we can see the screen now. Okay. Okay. Okay, go forth. Hi everyone, I'm Joel, the presenter of the Lomo Tourism Polytechnic Paris 3 chapter. 
Uh, uh, we actually have a many kind of programs, which are short-term program, mid-term program, and long-term program. But the impactful program that we have done are Gallon Corner and EcoEnzyme. Both of these programs include our long-term program. Gallon Corner <laughs> is an effective. Yeah. Gallon Corner is an effective yeah. campaign yeah. reducing yeah. plastic waste. Gallon Corner engages students to use yeah. refillable bottle and stop buying in our water with plastic packaging. Yeah. The end of this program yeah. is yeah. to yeah. keep yeah. the yeah. environment yeah. from the plastic yeah. waste that could give yeah. massive yeah. damage for the yeah. environment. Yeah. And the second one is Eco Enzyme. This program is also commonly called garbage enzyme, a multi-purpose liquid from fermentation of uh, organic waste. This liquid has multiple functions, which can be used a mocking liquid, insect replant, fertilizer, and kitchen cleaner. Even can be used as an additional ingredient on the detergent to kill bacteria. In our campus, students from culinary program always conduct practical study resulting in large amount of food waste, especially fruits and vegetables. This purposely were disposed without any treatment. And eco enzyme become one of the alternatives to utilize the food waste into the valuable products. And our upcoming program in 2021 is developing two programs, which are campaign programs, such as Zero Waste Campaign and Climate Change Campaign. And the second one is to diversify of eco enzyme to be a hand sanitizer. That's all for me. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, Lazarus, for your presentation. It was great. Now we're going to circle back to Bagus from Pata Indonesia ba Bali Tourism Polytechnic student chapter. Bagus, could you please turn on your camera, unmute yourself, and tell us what you guys have been up to? Um, all right. Um, it says on my screen you cannot start your videos because the host has stopped it. Can you? Is there any ways that you fix that? Give us one moment. Sure. Can you try now? Right. So, can you so see me? Can you now. That's great. Okay. Absolutely. So, let me see on my screen for right now. All right. So, here it is. Can you see my screen? Uh, it's still loading. Okay. But maybe you could kick us off and get started first. Um, hold on a second. Let me restart sharing my screen. Uh, um, can you see it now? Uh, it's still loading. Uh, this is still now? It's loading, but slowly. Okay. Or I think, I, what are we just not using a screen, if that's a better idea? Yes, please. Okay, so, all right, hello everyone. My name is Bagus, representing Pata Bali Tourism Pool Technic at this beautiful moment. I'm gonna share what we've been doing so far. Um, here is, we have some annual program from Pata Students Chapter Bali Tourism Pool Technic, as well as a new program which just started last year, um, exactly around November. So the first annual program, so of course, uh, we have been doing this for a couple of years now, which is going to be the travel uh, riding competitions. So the travel riding competitions last year was canceled, of course, because of the pandemic. But this year, our traveling, um, our, <clears throat> the competitions um, was held successfully with the theme, my culture, my pride, where we are hoping for the the, the writers, which the participant will make a writing to promote their cultures. And we've got the winners uh, for this year. The first one is Padma Yoni from uh, Prasete Mulia University um, with the title of the writing. It's going to be uh, Mahaganga Valley, Harmonization of Agro, uh, Agriculturism and Tourism. The second winner we have here is Iputu Gede Eka Pratuka with the title, The Cultural Pride of Manganeng. And then the third winner is Natania Sabrina Yapari with the title, Reimagining Old Town uh, Tunjungan Street. 
Uh, now I've been talking about the new program we have, we have been having um, in Bata, uh, Bata Bali which is going to be a donation for young artist painting community. So we've been doing this since um, we've started the observation to come to si uh, what the village called Cyan Village, which was declared as a new tourism village right here in Ubud. So I've been invited to go there, do some observation and here's what we found. They have a very, very um, unique style of painting called the young artist painting, with, which involve um, young people. And then they're really um, in dire condition need some help from us because they are willing to make a new school for those who wanted to join it. So, and then the next one is we are still working on it. There are some programs that we would like to, to tell you more about, but due to short of the time, I think that's all I can say for now. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Bagus, for that presentation. We did eventually manage to see your slides. Uh, sorry about the technical difficulties and maybe next time. <laughs> Absolutely. So, now we're going to go to Japan. So representing Pata Japan Wakayama University student chapter, we have Juri Okita with us today. Okay, thank you, Alessia. I will share my presentation. Just a minute. Can you see it? Uh, yes, but you might want to go full screen. We are looking okay. at your last slide right now. Okay. Oh. okay, from now start. Yes. Hello everyone, I'm Julie Okita. I play chairperson in Wakayama University student chapter in Japan. From now, I will talk about our activity. Uh, next. Our member is uh, Wakayama University student chapter built on November 26, 60 as part of official student chapter. And last week we received six, six new members. So the number of member is now 30 people. And next, uh, our activity in 2020 last year, our chapter style is based on project team. The project were going to act by themselves, having each aims, but um, most of them cannot have practiced on schedule because of the COVID-19. However, one project team, it's Travel Mills team, have kept being doing their activities. The team's aims are to respect all over the world culture through meals. So to realize it, they spread food culture by SNS, like Instagram and note application, and more the team analyze on SNS marketing by themselves, like this. And next and uh, last about our activity in 2021, this year. Uh, we are going to change our main activity style from project style to study meeting style. This is because on this situation, it's difficult to carry out project going outside. And I want to exchange our ideas with uh, uh, our members. So we are going to restart putting on whole meeting mainly. Of course, travel meeting team are going to keep their activities and if social situation would be better, uh, we would like to go training travel. And uh, this lecture is going to be held next month. Uh, this lecture is welcome to our graduate student guest speaker uh, who work at famous Japanese hotel. Uh, that's, uh, that's all. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Drew, for sharing with us. Now we are going to go to Korea. So Pata Korea Wongsun University student chapter is represented by Ninjina. Ninjina, the stage is yours. Thank you, Alicia. So hi, everyone. I hope you all are doing well. My name is Ningina, and I am the chairperson of Pata Rock Korea Wusong University student chapter. And yes, this is the only student chapter in South Korea. As we all know, 2020 was a difficult 
year for most of us and especially for students who couldn't attend the face-to-face -face classes. However, as the time passed, we kind of used to have online classes, online webinars and events. Of course, we couldn't organize a lot of events in the past year as our board members changed it frequently and our student members were all around the world, which made the goals we put even higher. But we did few collaborations with other student chapters and co-hosting some events as the Art of Communication Sustainably with PARA, Christmas for All fundraising event with PARA Christ University student chapter, and co-hosting like Explore Asia Three Parts event with the PARA Philippines LPU Manila student chapter, and etc. However, Last year was kind of full of success for the chapter members. We were able to establish partnerships with the hotels like Mondrian, Fairman Hotels and Resorts, Intercontinental Hotel Groups, and RMC Study Group, who offered tons of internships and training programs in five-star and luxury hotels within and outside of Korea, like in Dubai, Maldives, etc. Right now, Pata Busan University student chapter organized like a board with a strong and creative students of Wusong. For the coming months and coming year, we will be organizing five mentorship sessions, two mega events and uh, participate in global computations as UNWTO is organizing right now. And that was all I wanted to share with you today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, Ninjina. It's really great to hear what you guys have been up to. So next up, we have Pata Malaysia Help University student chapter representing. Uh, that is Alisa. Hi. Can you see me? Yeah. Can you hear me? All right, let me check. Give me a minute, I'm sorry. Can, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. Well, hello everyone, my name is Alisa and I'm the Vice President of Pata Malaysia Help University Student Chapter. Our student chapter was launched on October 2020 and to sum up our mission and vision is to deliver young tourism professionals that is capable to contribute and promote sustainable tourism development to our communities while working with industry stakeholders. From October 2020 till April 2021, we have created small projects such as our mask disposal challenge, promoting self-recorded videos on how to dispose masks responsibly and using the hashtag mask is our hero. We also posted Instagram stories weekly that promote sustainable development goals and examples how to go green on a daily basis. Our student chapter was able to create an Ecolution Bingo Challenge to educate our communities on green practices. Besides that, we have successfully co-hosted with a virtual webinar with Pata Youth, which is, you can see on my slide, the VR Innovation in Tourism Destination Marketing. But our signature webinar is on preserving the past archaeological heritage and tourism in Legong Valley, in which we have created awareness among Pata community about Legong Valley a truly unique UNESCO heritage site in the country. Our passion for our student chapter is to strive and to continue to equip our members to knowledge and skills they need in order to be capable leaders and to lead future tourism that is moving towards more to technological advances and sustainability tourism. Our student chapter has planned a series of talk shows with local tourism heroes. Stay tuned and we will hope to work closely with other student chapters in the future. Thank you, and uh, thank you for listening. <laughs> thank you so much, Alisa. Next up, we are going to go to Teresa, who is representing Pata Malaysia Taylor University student chapter. Hi, everyone. Hi. OK. Good day to wherever you are. I'm Teresa Dines, the chairperson of Pata Malaysia Taylor Student Chapter. So here's our vision and our mission. Our vision is to be the leading student chapter in cultivating the leaders of tomorrow and bridging gaps between the youth and the tourism industry. Our missions are to empower youth to initiate change, build global networking, enhance knowledge about the industry, and active in social responsibility activities of environment and community. 
So this is the current committee members of Pata Malaysia Talent Student Chapter. Here we have lecturer advisor, Dr. Kanam, and myself, president or chairperson and vice president, Fiona, Fiona Fernanda Bong and the others um, committees as well. So here's all the activities that we organized and participated last year and this year. We organized a webinar on sustainable tourism and rural development. We also have new members recruitment we collaborate with the other student chapter for Christmas for All. We also host a work, uh, the strategic partnership between Taylor's University and Malaysia Tur Tourism Council and also our members ice breaking session. So here's our upcoming activities. We'll be having Hex Talk on Vaccine Passport next month in May and also Ramadan Charity. For more updates on our Student chapter, do follow our social media page, Facebook, Pata Malaysia Taylor Student Chapter, Instagram, Pata SC, underscore MY. Thank you so much and stay safe. Thank you so much, Teresa. That was absolutely amazing to hear from you guys and what you guys are doing. So next up, we are going to go to Pata Nepal Gate Student Chapter, represented by Dipishna. Hello everyone, Dipeshna Hamal here from Gate Pata Nepal student chapter. It's very nice to meet you and get this opportunity to present myself as a chairperson in front of you all. The outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic has brought uncertainty and spillover impact on almost all of the sectors. Nepal has also been affected adversely by the pandemic and its preliminary impact recorded loss to the Nepalese economy as also a result of traveling restriction and flight cancellation. Considering the intensity of coronavirus and in health impact, Nepal government had to cancel the ambitious campaign Visit Nepal Year 2020, which aimed to bring 2 million tourists in Nepal. The country public health and the social support system will be under great sin to cope with the flood of returnees from Nepal, straight by border. All returnees will be need to test quarantine, feed and shelter. When tourism resumes, tourism will be more focused as people nationally or internationally are searching for ways to travel to get out from their comfort zone and to satisfy their needs. Being in the tourism industry, we have been more aware with the campaigns and the responsibility to promote tourism, bring back the guests to experience in better ways. We have also been organizing and supporting the underdeveloped places to promote it as a tourism destination and also to make local people life more easier by motivating them. COVID has been adversely affecting not only in Nepal, but all over the world. So if we take proper pickers and safety measures, we can get over it and start to travel again. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you so much for that positive attitude. I love it. So next up, we have Rinjina representing the Pata Nepal's chap student chapter. Rinjina, please take it away. Thank you so much, Miss Alithia. Hello, everyone. Namaste. I'm Rinjina Opriti, chairperson of Pata Nepal student chapter. And this is our team. We are member of 25. The committee was formed on uh, January 2021. And uh, we have general member of around 150. And uh, to build the team that we have first, we started our chapter first activity is uh, hiking to one of our major destination in Kathmandu Valley, that is Jama Tsugumba. And this hiking definitely helped us to build our team and to get to know our members individually. And then we had our 44th annual general meeting of Pata Nepal chapter, where we, every member of the student chapter engaged ourselves in different kinds of activities like entertainment, hosting the guests, uh, arranging uh, all the facilities to our guests in the events. Uh, this event definitely helped all the students in the committee to build ourselves uh, as an event manager in the coming future. So uh, this is a picture that uh, was uh, one of our fam trips to, to another province uh, where we student chapter organized introductory session uh, where we welcome seven new chapter to our family in this trip definitely have the student to build up their horizon and to know new places and uh, how the chapters are formed uh, the major event of Pata nepal student chapter is youth talent quest where we engage in students in different kinds of activities uh, to build their talents to 
uh, find their talents that is within them and uh, the events and activities that youth talent quest consist is a public speaking where a student from every uh, chapter college speak uh, on different topics related to the industry and we uh, obviously groom them uh, after they participate in the competition and here are some glimpses of the event that was concluded that concluded before a while ago within this month and next is tourism and hospitality quiz uh, where students from different colleges participated in this particular competition another is content writing another is futsal tournament for our student chapter committee members uh, and uh, our top priority actions for 2021 is providing different kinds of trainings and workshops to the student chapter committee member. And uh, we obviously help them to push their knowledge in different kinds of activities uh, that will help them to cope up with all the uh, difficulties that arise in the future. And uh, I'm so sorry. And next is research and development and festival calendar. This is our approach where we involve students in different kinds of research, which helps them to know about new destination and festival around the nation and help to promote Nepal as a, a most to visit destination. And we, organize, we are organizing different fan trips for student chapter committee members uh, to build up their horizon. And our top priority action is to engage different YTPs uh, around the nation to give them all the opportunity that is provided by the PATA and we also include students in different kinds of social welfare activities to knowledge to provide them knowledge about different kinds of safety measures, discipline, mannerism that must be followed in the industry to groom them to build a better person that they already are and that we can do much more to them. And this is the new uh, training that Pata Nepal chapter organized uh, where they educated different tourism professional regarding health and hygiene protocols and we student chapter will soon be following these measures uh, by our own personal level. So thank you so much. Uh, hope to share more later. Uh, stay safe, stay happy. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Alicia. Thank you so much. So next up we have Roxanne who is representing the Pata New Zealand AUT student chapter. Roxanne, please take it away. Thank you and hello everyone. My name is Roxanne Duwag and I'm the vice chairman of the Pata student chapter here in New Zealand at the Auckland University of Technology. Um, so as everyone has mentioned, you know, COVID was pretty hard on everyone. Um, we did take the wonderful opportunities that um, Pata Youth Roundtable offered, which was the cultural exchange last year um, to learn about everyone's destination. And we also presented a bit about New Zealand's um, environment and tons of ecotourism opportunities when we can travel. But for this year, we have tons of exciting events. Uh, we're starting off with 10 new members, which is great, all women and all undergraduate students, super keen. And this Saturday, we're all going to Q Haven, which is a 24 hectare farmland that has been transformed into a nature reserve. And it's to promote um, sustainable activities. And we're going to go with our members to plant some trees and learn about other conservation practices. Following that in June, we'll be doing beach cleans with the New Zealand Department of Conservation around Auckland. Um, and also the month of June is our sustainability month. So we'll be putting posts around, uh, creative posters around the university to remind everyone not to use the lights as much, encourage people to use the elevator, um, to not use the elevator and use the steps instead. And also we'll be uh, guiding tours on our roof garden um, to promote uh, people to eat healthy and also uh, learn about agriculture and how it can also be integrated within buildings. Um, we're gonna uh, end the year by going to Goat Island, which is a marine reserve, and we'll have PhD students helping um, teach about marine reserve activities, ecotourism around marine resources, and discuss topics such as diversification of the economy, um, because a lot of remote islands around New Zealand need to diversify their economies away from tourism. So. That's a, a theme of resilience that we'll be talking about a lot this year. Thank you for your time. 
Thank you so much, Razan. I think it's great that you guys are focusing on sustainability and your destination is so gorgeous. I always wish that I could go back to New Zealand. So now we are going to travel from New Zealand to the Philippines. Uh, up first, we have Pata Philippines Enderan College's student chapter represented by Michelle. Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, or good evening. <laughs> We're all around the world right now. I hope you guys can see my screen. Yes. Okay, so hi, everyone. I'm Michelle Adib. I'm going to be representing Enderin College's student chapter here in the Philippines, so Kawai Kawai and Mabuhay. Uh, we would like to share two of our major events that we think that it's really relative to talk about. The first one being with Chef Bosong Visawa. So for those who are living in Bangkok, Thailand, I'm sure she has no secret chef. She's, she represents uh, her own restaurant called Bolan. Uh, the restaurant is 100% organic and sources ingredients from over 150 local farmers and artisans in Bangkok, Thailand. So her talk was dedicated to, um, to talk about and converse about rather um, her journey, her philosophies and aspiration in regards to the food industry. We held this talk uh, in order for our uh, students to gain further knowledge about uh, the impact of, their, of the restaurant industry with regards to the environment. And we wanted to inspire them as well to think of the sustainability side of the IHM or the HA department that we're representing, right? So our second webinar talk was held last February 23rd. It's called In Conversation with Caleb Han. He's actually an alumnus in Enderin Colleges. And uh, we held this talk in order for him to share his knowledge about the hospitality industry and what were his uh, challenges and what were how he overcame the challenges as being a foreign student in the Philippines, considering that he's Korean and his strengths and weaknesses of um, how he overcame the challenges and what it takes to be a successful hotelier. And I would just like to thank everyone for listening and we hope that we can partner with various student chapters because uh, we are just reviving the student chapter this uh, semester this year. And we hope we can partner up and uh, have many events in the long run. And here's my contact information. So please stay safe, everyone, and keep healthy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle. I'm so pleased to see that you guys have restarted the student chapter and are active. So everyone, please contact Michelle for collaborations. Next up, we're going to go to our next student chapter, also based in the Philippines. It is Pata Philippines Far Eastern University student chapter. Representing it is Michaela. Thank you, Ms. Alicia. Can everyone hear me already? Yes. Okay. Um, good day, everyone. I am Michaela Gold, the student chapter representative of Pata Philippines FEU student chapter. On behalf of the officers, I would love to share three of our highlighted events during our term. So for our first event, we have, which happened during the month of November to December, we had the virtual museum where uh, students were able to showcase their creativity despite of the pandemic. For our second event, we had the Tourism Olympics, which happened in the month of March, where our students were able to harness their skills more, even more in the roots of their homes with the following competitions. Travel Future Writing, Virtual Tour Guiding, Quizby, and Poster Making. Lastly, for our um, last event, we had the Kultura Pamana, which also happened in the month of March, where as we conducted a webinar that talks about the happenings of the Philippines heritage and cultural property. We had invited speakers from the NCCA and one of the professors that is knowledgeable regarding the topic. This webinar also serves as a stepping stone for the students who aims or wants to become a heritage worker or an advocate in the near future. So that sums up all the um, terms events. Again, thank you so much and stay safe. Thank you very much, Michaela, for that presentation. Uh, Hang on. <laughs> Thank you very much for that presentation. It was really, really good. I'm so excited to see what else you guys have to come up with next. And we are going to go to another student chapter. This time it is Pata Philippines LPU Manila student chapter represented by Basilda. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Alicia. Okay, so. So hi everyone, greetings from the Philippines. I am DG Calianta, stu Senior Student Advisor representing the student chapter of LPU Manila. And in behalf of LPU Manila, we are grateful for the opportunities 
given by Pata and Pata YT. So without further ado, I'm going to share with you all of our successful projects, initiatives, and collaboration for the 2020-2021 academic year. And for my presentation, I will base it with this year's theme, which is Reflect, Reconnect, and Revive. So first up, as we reflect on the current situation, we realize that we must not be discouraged by the pandemic. Instead, we have to inspire um, and challenge more young people who are passionate about our industry. So we conducted community hunt and membership drive to gather more tourism professionals and hone their skills as we give them opportunities. Followed by Ignite, keeping the Pata LP on fire, which is the first official virtual event of our chapter. Here we encourage our members and help them to become more equipped by sharing to them what Pata and Pata LPU has to offer. Next, what I think uh, one of the reasons why we are awarded by Pata Philippine chapter as the most active student chapter in our country is because of collaboration, which is related to Reconnect. Like what I have said, we give opportunities to our members with all the invitation and collaborations we receive with our partner organizations. So those are the few um, organizations that we, are, we partnered with. So speaking of collaboration, I just want to highlight our collaboration with Pata Christ University, which is a panel discussion during the celebration of World Tourism Day. Here we tackle different perspectives of the speakers from different tourism sectors about the topic over tourism as an, as an opportunity. And the other one is Exploring Asia, a three-part event with Pata Singapore, Temasek Polytechnic Student Chapter, and Pata Wusong University Student Chapter. Here we uh, share how the unit life uh, in today's era. And we also showcase our knowledge about itinerary planning, and for the last part, our beloved Ed Aragon talk about leadership during this trying time. And for the last part, revive. So we came up with events that we think will restore the burning passion of tourism and hospitality students in our university. So we conducted two competitions, open for all, and two events for our members. So the competitions are promote me, showcasing the beauty of the Philippines and an it's an infographic competition and the future of tourism a virtual tour guiding contest both aims to promote tourism in the philippines and to showcase the culture tradition tourist spots and gastronomy of each province of cities that would be chosen by the contestants and the last pata talk and let's get patified where uh, where both event aims to have a meaningful interaction with our members I think my time is already up, so let me just take this opportunity to give thanks to our mentors. Uh, this will not be, be possible without their support to Sir Bob Zobrado and Dean Betragon. Thank you so much. So that's all for our student chapter for collaboration uh, or any inquiries. You may contact us through these platforms. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, BG. Now, up next, we have Miss Angelica from Pata Philippines University of Baguio student chapter. Ms. Angelica? Thank you, Ms. Alitia. So a pleasant day to everyone. I am Angelica Jerome Mendoza, the former chairman of Pacific Asia Travel Association, Philippines University of Baguio student chapter and the current event chairman for the research and development. It has been a year since the pandemic was declared, but as resilient as we are, we all have adapted to the new normal setting, ensuring that we are still maximizing the time being given to us to learn more about certain aspects under the travel and tourism industry that need certain attention. With the school's commitment to delivering quality education being attached to organizations like Pata have broadened our horizons into continuous working for the love of learning and developing our industry. The Pata Yubago student chapter has been organizing a series of events to equip our student members with the skills and knowledge that are at par with our industry standards. We also had our virtual tours where um, virtual restaurants where the student members are trained to be entrepreneurs through the given opportunity to manage their own virtual restaurants as part of their experiential learning. 
aside from this is we also had our talent basket wherein being the partner of talent basket in the philippines the student members were able to have their international practicum at the comfort of their homes working with people from different parts of the world the organizations have also spearheaded the sixth international tourism and hospitality students convention where it was endorsed by pata and co-hosted by other student chapters uh, we, ha we had Pata Bangladesh, um, Dhaka University, we had Pata India Christ University, Pata Canada Vancouver, Capilano University, and Pata Korea Wusong University student chapters. Along with this is the second National Tourism and Hospitality Student Skills Olympics, which we are about to conduct on May 14 and 21, which is open for all student chapter members. Just visit our page and um, click the registration form. So we are looking forward to that. Let us make the world a smaller place where we can reach out to each other, regardless of our distance. And lastly, it's the tourism and hospitality initiatives, where we organize numerous events, such as virtual tour guiding, virtual and virtual tips from the experts. We also had um, co-hosted the different various um, PATA organized events, such as the art of communicating, sustainability, and the ongoing PATA virtual paths. So that would be all on behalf of the Pataio Baguio student chapter. Thank you for the invite and for joining this very timely, informative and virtual event. Thank you, Ms. Alithia. Thank you, Angelica. Next up, we have Anna from Pata Philippines University of Mindanao student chapter to share with us what they have been up to. Thank you, Ms. Ali. Could you hear me clearly? Yes. Okay, so good day everyone. Mabuhay ipadayaw. My name is Hannah Marie Vergara and I am very delighted to introduce to you Pata Philippines University of Mindanao Student Chapter. So for the context, Pata Philippines UM Student Chapter is a newly established student chapter. It was launched just last year. So given that new protocols were implemented and there are no face-to-face -face classes for the meantime, um, everything was set up online even the formation of the XCOM committee. So same way on the primary channels on recruiting members. So we conducted our first general orientation last October 22, 2021, not to mention virtually. And we were able to successfully gather 74 sharp with the official members. So the student chapter is passionate and dedicated on creating purposeful experiences that promote skills and personal development to truthfully drive change within the local community towards generating significant and remarkable impact in both national and global level. So as of the moment, um, we don't have much initiative activities due to the current situation. However, we have our future projects that can be um, can be passed on to the next set of officers, such as engaging members in workshops and activities that promote the normal travel safety guidelines, virtual tour guiding, and ways to promote sustainable tourism given the visible present challenges, and looking forward for more collaborations with our local community community. So besides, as soon as the student chapter was established, um, we are constantly engaging and participating in various online events and activities that staged by our university and even outside invitations that allows us to visualize ideas to be considered and, and included in our future plans and projects. And also, we are motivated to think outside the box on ways to make a tangible impact starting in our university towards the leading global travel and tourism industry. And hopefully we will be able to conduct our own initiative activity sooner. And we are excited to see our student chapter grow and have more collaborations with the other student chapters. So um, that's all from me. Thank you so much for listening. Anna, thank you so much for that. So everyone, please reach out to Anna for future collaborations. So now we are still going to stay in Southeast Asia, but that was a very exciting journey around Philippines and the different student chapters that we have in Philippines. Next up, we are going to Singapore, which is where I am from. So I'm very excited to hear from Li Yun, who is from Pata Singapore Institute of Technology student chapter. Okay, hi. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Li Yun, and I'm the president representing Pata Singapore SIT student chapter. So today, I'll be sharing with you more about my student chapter and the activities we have organized and also future initiatives we have for 2021. 
Our third chapter was established in 2019 and the club aims to connect and expose students with like-minded people around the world. We aspire to empower students to be responsible for their future and promote personal growth through events such as site visits, conferences and networking sessions with external part-time members. And as a new student chapter, we aim to expand our current membership to be able to attract a wider student body and at the same time, let them learn more about what Pata does and promote, the sus promote sustainable tourism. This is my team. I have four other EXCO members working alongside with me. We are all year two students specializing in air transport management and hospitality business. Next, I'll be sharing with you significant events that we have just carried out. Earlier this year, we invited Aditya to share on networking tips on if in our networking masterclass, where students are able to put what they have learned in the networking masterclass into practice with industry partners. We invited 10 industry partners from the travel and tourism industry for the second session of the networking masterclass. And just last week, we had new members where we shared, where I shared to them what PATA was and what the organization is as a whole. We also had engagement and warning sessions with the new, exist, new and existing members. So for future initiatives, the team has come up with few events like industries, hotel site visits, and also knowledge sharing sessions through engagement talks and also sharing with industry partners. We also plan to have sustainability workshops to promote environmentally sustainable initiatives. Thank you. You can connect through our social media with us. Thank you, Li Yuan. So next up, we have another student chapter based in Singapore. Uh, representing it is Yan Zi, and it is for Patha Singapore Tamasic Polytechnic student chapter. Yan Zi, please. Hi. Hi. They all see this. Yeah, you want to try sharing this? Oh, okay, yes. I think it works now. Okay, so hi everyone, I'm Yan Zi and I'm the chairperson of Pada Singapore Tamasic Polytechnic Student Chapter. So to start off, some of other events that our student chapter has organized include the Island Exchange with Pada Indonesia Bali Tourism Polytechnic just last September. So it was a three-part collaboration where we shared about Instagrammable spots and hipster cafes that has a meaning behind in our respective country. Then we had a masterclass in networking session um, where it was hosted by Alithia. And following that, we had a networking session with our counterpart to, you know, get to know more about each other. So just in case you all want to find out more about the event, you can scan a QR code over here. Next, we just had a recent collaboration with Pada Philippines LPU Manila, as well as Pada Korea Wusong University Student Chapter. And again, it was a three-part collaboration and it was titled Pata Student Chapter Exploring Asia. So the first part was a school vlog where members from their respective student chapters give a tour around their campus and um, talk more about how their school system works, especially during this ongoing pandemic period. Then the second part was the itinerary planning where the presenters draft out a real itinerary that they would recommend tourists to visit when they are in that country. So for instance, they included some of the popular eateries, historical places, and interesting sites about their country into the itinerary. And to end off the three-part collaboration, we were honored to have Dr. Dean Beth from Philippines LPU Manila to share with us some tips on how to increase productivity and to better manage our time and schedule. So it was definitely an insightful collaboration, and I believe that all members have gained something throughout this event. So if any of you are interested to find out more about this event, you may scan a QR code here on to find out more. Yeah. So in case you all want to know more about Student Chapter, you may follow our Instagram at tp.pata. Or if you wish to collaborate for any event or ask me anything, you may drop me an email at my email address here. And with that, I thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Yanzi. That was great. Okay, next up, we have Pata Thailand Yusitani College Student Chapter represented by Para Takon. Uh, yes, can you hear and see me? Hi, yeah. Take yeah, it okay. away. Okay, so uh, hello, student chapter from all around the world. My name is Pratikon Tesha Tundukun, or you can call me as Ken. My position is the vice chairperson of Pata Dusitani College student chapter. And as this year is our first year to officially have a student chapter in our college, so we are, we are on the process 
for completing forming a student chapter. We have a many projects that we want to create in the future, but now we would like to focus on our workflow. What do we need to create, develop, and start as a great foundation first? Because it's like for the greater result. Then the upcoming plan is to encourage students from every major in our college to join the Pata Association. As my own experience, I think Pata gave me a lot of experience that I expect. And as the Sitani College chapter, I would like to say thank you so much for having us here and hoping to meet with other student chapter well, like soon in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. So welcome on board as a very new student chapter. We hope to see you guys active and be able to collaborate with you. So next up, we also have a relatively new student chapter as well. It is Pata UAE Higher Colleges of Technology student chapter represented by Maha. It is our first all-female led student chapter and we are really proud of them. Maha, please. Thank you, Ms. Alidia. Hello everyone, good morning or good afternoon. My name is Mahan Naqbi. I am the chairperson of the UAE Higher College of Technology student chapter. Our student chapter is the first chapter in the Middle East and the first female chapter. So we are very excited to take this opportunity. Since we started, we create our first event on 11th of March. We introduce ourselves to the community, our goals, visions, and missions. During the event, we published social media channels and introduced UAE lifestyle and UAE new destinations for uh, tourism. Our vision is to focus on sustainable development. We will inspire to take the lead and create awareness about the importance of sustainable development in the region, including social, economic, and environmental sustainability. As we are a new chapter and uh, we only started in 2021, we look forward to introduce an overview of the region and the UAE regarding environmental change throughout the years and uh, possible solutions. Also empower participants uh, to share their uh, creative sustainability solutions and building a better tomorrow for the region. So uh, our current goal is to develop a new challenge that society can participate in. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Maha, for that. So next up, we have Pata UK Bournemouth University student chapter represented by Abdullah. This is also another new student chapter. We're very happy to have you guys with us. Hello, everyone. Greetings from Pata UK View student chapter. Uh, my name is Abdullah. I'm enrolled as a chairperson. And we, as what Alithia said, we are a newly established chapter. We are um, currently two months young and we are the first student chapter in the UK. So the chapter currently has around 30 members and it consists of students uh, from postgraduate degree as the majority and undergraduates and also uh, doctoral degrees. So um, we have our organizational direction, which we call three C's. It is a collaboration, contribution and connection. So we are expecting members can enhance their leadership and other organizational skills through the projects that we are going to enroll. And also members can also implement their uh, academic knowledge and give real world impact to the communities. And for the connection, we, we are expecting members can open and engage with future potential employers and, and networks. So that's why in these two months, we have collaborated on two major online-based events. We did the first co-hosting on Pata Youth Webinar. And our latest event was a collaboration with a tourism institution called uh, London Central Alliance, which highlighting on how to recover tourism in London, since London is the, the central of the tourism in the UK. And also, we also plan to have some regular activities, including a tour guiding, um, which is uh, to some destinations around, which is uh, guided by the rotated uh, members. So um, it also our way to uh, increase our uh, membership and the excitement between members since um, we are soon going to allow to have a, a, a bit of mobility here in the UK. So I think that's it from Pata UK uh, View student chapter. Uh, we are also looking forward to connecting and collaborating with all other students chapters and all of you. So please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Abdullah. Um, 
Next up, we also have a super new student chapter joining us today. It is Pata University of Girona EMTM student chapter represented by Stella. Stella, please take it away. Hi everyone, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm Stella, the chairperson from the first EMTM chapter. So we are very excited to be here. Today I will discuss our goals and the legacy that we want to leave to future generations. So we come from different countries. We come from the Europe, America, Asia, and Africa. And we are here because students of tourism, we want to create value of our master thesis. We'll be submitting very soon our thesis. But more than that, we want to share and network. And that's why we are using the alumni from the European Master in Tourism Management to have talks with them. So far, we learned about sustainable consultancy. We also discussed with a PATA full-time employee to learn more about PATA's opportunities. Moreover, we had this great event. It was our first virtual event. And we invited EMTM alumni to learn about their master thesis experiences. And we had 38 participants. We learned about feelings, challenges, and tips. It was great because we had a lot of people from the upcoming generation, which can be the people who can continue the PATA chapter's legacy. So what's next for us? So stay tuned, please, because we want to make a chapter's networking event. It will be more like a social event. We want to learn more about you guys. So this will be in May. Then in June, we want to make a career development day to learn about how we can transition an internship opportunity to a real job. July and August will be for the master thesis value creation. And finally, in September, we will have our industry day. So this is all from our side. We are very excited to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation. Please remember to follow us on social media and stay tuned for the event in May. Thank you for the invitation and hi to everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Stella. That was amazing. Absolutely amazing. So ladies and gentlemen, last but certainly not least, we have Hong An from Pata Vietnam RMIT University student chapter in and she is going to be sharing with us what her student chapter is up to. Hong An, please. Hello, my name is Hong Wang and I have, I'm the representative from Vietnam RMIT student chapter. And today I'm going to share with you about our impactful activities in 2020 as well as our plan for 2021. So in 2020, we have conducted a lot of activities, but I'll focus on the two biggest ones which are the, on the World Tourism Day, we have conducted a competition for high school students to work on the initiatives of, uh, for the tour, Vietnam tourism um, in the upcoming 10 years. And this is the platform for the high school students to exchange their, their knowledge as well as like have a approach, clo closer approach to the real life context. Another event is the Green Edge uh, project. And this is a cleanup event where it's, and it's based around Ngoc Khanh Lake near our university. And this has made an impact on the local community and push them to take action regarding the environmental issues. So to continue in 2021, we plan to develop a re research block focusing on the rural tourism development and the sustainable tourism development. And also we will run some community-based activities and academic webinars. So I hope for our collaboration in the future. And also if you have a chance, please join our upcoming webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much. So ladies and gentlemen, everyone, please join me in celebrating our PATA student chapters. That was exactly 26, 27, 20, I, I've lost count, but there was so many presentations all done within two minutes coming from all around the world. Uh, it's amazing. We are now done with our very first part of the student chapter roundtable discussion. 
We are going to do a very short break right now. It's going to be short, three minutes long only, and it's just for everyone to kind of shake it out, stretch, enjoy some chill music. But So we're going to go for a break, and then we are coming back to hear about best practices for handover to tackle this challenge that we all face together. And we're going to share with each other our best practices and learn from each other. So now, uh, can I get the holding slides and the music for the break to come on? And we're going to go on a break. You can get coffee. Okay, you guys in like two minutes and 30 seconds. Okay, so thank you so much everybody for an amazing first session where we had student chapters from everywhere share about what they've been up to. Right now, we are going to dive straight into our second session, which is about best practices. Uh, so there's this one issue that all student chapters have is that we are run by students for students. And the thing about students is that students graduate. So when a student chapter leader graduates, a lot of times they are faced with the issue of who are they going to pass on the leadership position to? And that issue of handover and progression is something that every single one of you uh, at times struggle with. Some student chapters have a lot more practice at doing a smooth transition and smooth handover because they've been around longer. So I wanted to take this opportunity to actually give them the stage. I don't have all the answers, but together as a community, we can come up with the solution and answers together. So first up, we have Hayley Brown representing Pata Australia University of Queensland, UQ student chapter. Hayley, uh, thank you very much for doing this presentation for us. Hello, thank you for having us. I've just got Jung Yi sharing the slide. Perfect. Uh, can you see it? It's still loading for me. <laughs> Sorry, so, just a moment. Um, yeah. 
or maybe try again. And present. Cool. Well, hello everyone. My name is Hayley Brown and I am the chairperson of Pada Australia's student chapter from the University of Queensland, also known as UQ. You would have heard our Vice Chairman Zhang Yu speak before with what our student chapter has been up to in the past year and how we are supporting local businesses. However, I am now very excited to present our student chapter practices for handover and succession planning, especially during COVID. Our student chapter started in 2018 and we're the only part of student chapter in Australia. Now to give you all an idea of how our student chapter is structured, we have two branches. Our first is our executive team and our sub-executive team, which manage most of the student chapter activity and communications. The other branch is the student committee, where you can find our postgraduate and our undergraduate committee. These teams manage most of our degree communications between staff and students. We have nine student chapter positions that you can run for. Anyone in our degree is eligible to run for any of these positions, depending on the individual person's preferences. Our team is combined with a mix of 22 domestic and international students. We made this change to allow students who are stuck overseas during the COVID-19 pandemic the opportunity to still be a part of our executive team. We do our communications over Zoom to be inclusive of all people everywhere. Along with our 22 members, we have 100 members who have signed up to our student chapter and attend our events. Now I'll introduce you to our executive team who are in charge of running the core activities and communications between other student chapters and our degree members. Our event team, Jewel and Kate, usually do the communications with other student chapters in regard to co-hosting seminars. Often members in the core executive team are in their final year of their degree and have come from other positions within the student chapter first. One of our big parts of our team is our sub-executive committee. Now we have five keen and eager sub-executive team members. Our sub-executive team works on a rotation schedule with each member of the executive team so they have the chance to learn about all of the different roles. Often members of the sub-executive team are first and second years at the University of Queensland and re-elect for one of the executive positions at the annual general meeting for the next year. By having team members that carry on into the next year, it continues the student chapter loyalty and also helps transition between each year smoother and more transparent. By the end of the year, they're often ready to take on one of the core leadership roles and run the student chapter in the following year. Now, just this year, we have created a sub-branch of our student chapter called the Student Committee. This is due to the fact that our university degree has both an undergraduate and a postgraduate program. And previously, there was little communication between the programs, but also between the teachers. Each of these representatives are here to ease the stress of our members and make our degree just that little bit easier, uh, especially for our first years and second years, by creating and answering the frequently asked questions of our students. By having a representative from each cohort, it makes it a lot easier to communicate to members of all different ages. And it's also the hope that some of these younger representatives in the first and second years will move into positions in our core committee in later years, which will make the handover easier and smoother in the future. Now, in terms of how we vote our team in, we hold an annual general meeting at the end of each year in early November. This is where we elect the new team into their respective positions through a voting pro process. By having a new team elected in November, it allows each person three months to settle into their positions and ask the previous team any questions that are necessary um, or if they need help throughout the holidays. Each person will be in the position for about the length of a year and if they choose to stay again in the same or in a different position, they can re-elect at the AGM. We have a handful of people who do this every year. Now, how we pass along information, the hard stuff. We create ongoing handover manuals get, that get passed down each year. So on the left and on the middle, we have our treasurer guide and our handover manual, which I've uh, blanked a little bit of details out there. And on the right is our chairperson handover. So each of our positions do this. 
This is so the information and advice from many years gets passed down along to the person going into that position. This not only helps retain information within the society, but it really eases the stress of the new person coming into the position. Now, each of our positions do this and update it every single year. This has helped, especially during COVID years, as now that Australia is open back up and we're able to run activities as per usual, we were able to grab information from the 2019 guides because that was more relevant to us. However, it is also helpful to have all the information from the COVID year still in there because you never know what's going to happen with COVID and if our student chapter, uh, if our Australia goes back into lockdown, then we can grab information from what they did in that year and we can see what worked, what didn't, and then we can alter it from there on. All of our handovers, event plans, networking contacts, passwords, meeting minutes and financial information is all kept on one collective Google Drive. Each position has access to their specific folder and all information gets added on there. So if you would like to see what the event folder would say, for example, it stores every single event that we run. And this is all the ones that we have run so far this year. As you can see in the top photo, we run a variety of hotel tours, seminars, networking nights, activities that support local businesses, volunteering events and social events. And in the bottom photo is what you could expect to see in each folder. Now in that first document, we have a summary of the who, what, where, when, and why, and it also contains the bump in and bump out schedules so everyone knows what they're doing. You can also find contact lists of professionals in our industry in the second and third document and our expenditure proposal that tracks all of our finances so that future years um, can consider similar or different approaches depending on the finances of it because sometimes we do lose money on events and sometimes we do really well. So it's really good to see and compare them to other events. Now, these folders make it really easy for future years to find information and replicate or change the event. So in terms of our marketing, we use different platforms such as Canva, MailChimp, Business Suite, QPay to access all of our member lists and also express Excel spreadsheets of all of our current posting schedules. Um, you can see here that uh, we have our two co-vice presidents of marketing, Katie and Susie, and all of, also our current sub-executive for marketing, Tanu. Tanu learns how to post and um, use all the applications so she can decide to see if this is going to be a position that she wants to do in the future. This gets passed on to following years, so it keeps it easy to stay on top of. Uh, everyone in our, who is a part of our student chapter uses a professional networking platform called Slack to communicate. This makes it really easy to separate our home life from our work life. And it makes it really easy to send documents and share document, uh, send, uh, search for and share documents with each other. Xero is used by part of Australia's student chapter to be able to accurately keep track of our expenses and produce important financial information. These documents help measure our success and compare our financial position from previous years, as well as providing sufficient documents to ensure we are doing our financial obligations correctly when we are required to provide this. It's a very simple platform to use and saves us time. Another method um, of keeping track of our events is through QPay. All of our members sign in and all tickets are sold through QPay. You can hear, see here that we're able to track all physical events back to 2018. And now due to a post-pandemic world, we've decided to track our virtual events on there too. So all of these things has helped our student chapter to survive in a post-COVID uh, in a COVID world and thrive in a post-COVID world. Thank you, Pata, for allowing our student chapter this opportunity and inviting us to speak um, about our best handover and succession practices and that our insights and logistics possibly help student our, our chapters in the future. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you so much, Haley. That was uh, honestly absolutely amazing to get a sneak peek into the inner workings of your student chapter. You guys are so organized. You might be more organized than I am. <laughs> so thank you very much for that sharing session. I learned a lot. I'm sure we all learned a lot from you. Um, thank you so much. Next up, we have Yan Zi from Singapore from Pata Singapore Tomasic Poly student chapter, who is also going to be sharing with us their best practices for handover. Yanzi, could I invite you to come on stage, turn on your camera and mute yourself? Hi, 
Yes. <laughs> thank you. Okay. I'll hand it over to you right now. All right. Thank you, Alicia. So, hi, everyone. It's me again. And in case you have missed it earlier on, I'm Yan Zi, and I'm the chairperson of Para Singapore Tamasic Polytechnic Student Chapter. So, to start off, um, my student chapter is not a very big group to begin with, as we only have about 13 to 15 members. And this is because we value quality more than quantity. And therefore, we do not recruit a lot of um, members into our student chapter. So, on to the recruitment process. So, during recruitment, all applicants will have to go through an interview with the main committee members as well as, ad as, well as um, our advisors. So, beforehand, the committee members will have already planned out a, a list of questions to ask our applicants to test them on different areas. So, the interview question does not really need to have the depth, but we have to ensure that they are highly applicable in our student chapter as well. So, for example, we will ask them questions like, how would they handle tight headline, deadlines, as well as how would they react when someone comes to them for help. So, this is to test them on how well they can work under pressure, especially when there are a lot of events coming up all at once, and also to test them on their empathy skill to you know, see how they react when someone goes to them for help. So, you know, with the ongoing pandemic, we weren't allowed back in school, so we have no choice but to hold our recruitment um, interview virtually via Microsoft Teams. So, after the interview session, the main committee members will then discuss together on who we should accept and reject depending on how well the applicants handled those questions during the interview. So yeah, that's it for our recruitment process. Then after the recruitment, we have our PADA bonding day where we welcome the newly recruited members into the family and have them to introduce themselves. So during our, our bonding day, the main committee members will have already planned out events, um, games, activities for the committee members to you know, bond with one another and get to know more about each other. So especially this, especially since um, we have to work together to organize for future events. So, you know, we have to work in a team. So we have to make sure that we have a good relationship with one another. Next, we have our committee meeting where we talk about rules and our members' commitment to the student chapter. So we also use this time to update our committee members on the upcoming events or collaborations that we are planning to have so that everyone will know what is going on. Just like those normal meeting people have in the workforce, our secretary will draft out a meeting agenda to be sent to everyone at least a day before the meeting. So everyone will know what to expect during the meeting day itself. So here's an example of our meeting agenda and how it looks like. So we have the agenda item on the list and then a time allocated for each item as well as the presenters who will be presenting. Then, of course, after the meeting, the secretary will then draft out a meeting minute where she summarized the entire meeting and lists down the tasks that were being given to different kind of to different members to be completed by a certain day. So this is a sample of our meeting minutes where this is a summary of the meeting and here is the action assigned to and then um, the deadline to be completed by. Moving on, we have our annual PATA retreat day. So, you know, if you're wondering what's the difference between our bonding day and retreat day, well, the difference is that during bonding day, we only have activities, games um, for members to, you know, um, to bond with one another. But for our retreat day, members spend more time brainstorming on future event ideas and then presenting it to the rest of the committee members. Due to the ongoing pandemic, we couldn't have everyone back on campus because the number of people a lot in a group was limited to eight packs. Hence, we have to make it a hybrid event where some of us go back to school and some of us stay at home to attend the retreat. So during the retreat, each group were given substantial time to plan and come up with future event ideas that they wish to have. After which, they will be given time to present it to the other committee members where our advisor, together with my vice um, president, as well as myself, who will be giving them feedbacks and suggestions on how to improve and develop their ideas. So following up the retreat, we will have to, to list down all the questions, um, ideas or anything that we have and see which are the best ideas that, that are more feasible and then we will start to work on the event as soon as possible. Next, whenever we have any upcoming events, webinars, or anything related to our student chapter that require us to participate in, we will have the members to fill up the availability sheet that we have created using Google Spreadsheet to indicate if they are available or unavailable to attend. So in cases where they are not available, they will have to state a valid reason for not attending. 
So, you know, sometimes um, during before the webinar or event start, we will also assign two members to partner up with one another to produce a event in synopsis on what they have gained through the event. So this is to ensure that the members are paying attention to the speakers and to also hone on their writing skills. And, and lastly, as our student chapter is not, a, um, it's not a big group, it is easier for us to involve everyone in the event planning. So often at times, whenever there is an event, there will always be members from the main committee members um, to guide the subcommittee along for them to shadow us because you know, we want to um, involve them in the planning process earlier. So in doing so, we are actually exposing and training them to um, different kind of events, working with different people, as well as getting them to become more familiarized with the event planning process. So for example, when it comes to recruitment, they will need to produce uh, marketing materials such as posters, email messages, and recruitment form to reach out to our target audiences. And then when it comes to collaboration with other part of student chapters, they will have to um, brainstorm on possible topics to collaborate on, find a common date to host the event, and to go through many dry runs to, to ensure that the events will run smoothly on the day itself. Of course, there will always be members to guide them along to ensure that they are always on the right track. And when the subcommittees are planning for those events, we will also look at their attitude, their proactiveness, and whether they are someone who takes the initiative to lead or they are someone who require a lot of reminders um, or to remind them on what to do. So from the event planning process itself, we will then observe and pick up those who are more enthusiastic, um, more enthusiastic in planning the event and have the potential to take on leadership roles. Then we'll push these members to, um, to become better and we'll guide the rest, who can guide the rest after the main committee step down. And yeah, I think those are just some of the ways to ensure that, you know, the best chance of success for our legacy to continue for our future practice. And with that, I thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Yan Zi, for that presentation. Very illuminating, very knowledgeable. Thank you so much for sharing your best practices. That was great. Um, so now we are actually going to go into our Q&A session. So if you guys, uh, as well as our discussion session, this is, after all, a roundtable discussion. So actually, I'm going to invite everyone who has um, presented today to turn on your cameras again, join me back on stage and just come back, everyone come back <laughs> to really kickstart this discussion. Um, and of course, to everyone watching on Attendify, uh, I would really love it if you guys have any questions for our student chapter leaders, for our student chapter community, ask your questions in Attendify and we will get um the student chapter leaders to answer you it could be a question on best practices or it could be a question on that student chapter's earlier presentation on what they are up to etc etc for the student chapters leaders here with me today on screen um thank you very much for being here today for being part of our student chapter roundtable discussion uh if you guys have any questions for each other please uh, unmute yourself, raise your hands and ask. Uh, and if anyone has any questions for Yan Zi and Haley, who have given us really good uh, presentations on sharing best practices, this is also your chance and your opportunity to ask as well. So I'm just going to let you guys sit for a while. If anyone wants to kickstart us with a question, if there are any questions from the audience in Attendify. Uh, may I? Yes, hi, Katrina. Hi, hi everyone once again. Yeah, I'm really surprised that, you know, Canada is still standing with us <laughs> so late there. Um, I have a question, like to all of you actually, because, you know, we have COVID and we have so many restrictions. Uh, in many universities, classes are suspended. Yes, so what is the best way? How do you get in touch with all the members? Do you still try to organize something, uh, you know, offline? Do you communicate via email? Did you create, you know, any other source besides social media? If somebody has like some tips and advice on that, I would appreciate. So how do you stay connected? 
Okay, so the question is, how do you stay connected? Um, I know some student chapters have really interesting ways to stay connected with all their members. So honestly, if you have something to add to the conversation, please go ahead and unmute yourself and join us. Yeah. Can I share? So yes, as I mentioned that we are, a, we have more than 200 members and we are based in India. So it, we've been completely online. So what we've done to actually keep the communication going is we got everyone on a common WhatsApp group channel for an inform informal discussion because emailing and having professional channels, we still would not get the higher response rate. So just having those informal group chats helped us remove the barriers. And the second thing we did is we host these informal movie nights and game nights to help our members just connect with one another. So that's been an interesting way for us to get all our members on the same team. So online social party, right? Yeah. <laughs> nice, thank you. I also really like that it's um, a little bit informal instead of being so formal because we really need that social connection in the pandemic when we are staying at home and isolating and trying to keep yourself and everyone safe. Does any other student chapters want to share with Ekaterina how you guys stay in contact with your members? Um, yeah, I've got something. Um, so we have a lot of uh, Chinese uh, international students. And so uh, we've got three people in our student chapter in the executive team who have created a WeChat and a Weibo. Um, correct me if I pronounce them wrong. Um, and they communicate because a lot of like the people in China don't have access to the other platforms that we use, such as Facebook and Instagram. And so they run... Um, they post everything that we're doing on there and our Zoom links and our platforms and all of our, we do work experience Wednesday, um, team Thursday, try this Tuesday with all these different experiences on it. And we post that all on there every single week so that the Chinese students can feel involved. But the rest of it's also um, similar to Christ, uh, Christ University, India. Yeah. Um, I thought I'd just add that in because it's difficult with uh, international students, definitely. Thank you, Haley. I just wonder, uh, more people get attracted by those more relaxing events for fun, or more people, you know, follow more serious events like, uh, uh, you know, work-related and so on, where you have more more participants usually. Um, we usually have more participants in our networking events because we can hold them hybridly. So we can hold them in person and at the same time stream it. So, um, and also because we've got a lot of people who are in their final years graduating, uh, usually they want uh, to listen to someone that's gonna make them feel a little more safe going out into a post COVID world in the tourism industry. Um, so we usually get most on our seminars and our networking. Um, and we do find it a little bit hard to get everyone socially together when I feel like that should be the easy thing, but um, not as much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So I see Roxanne has a hand up. Roxanne, you want to go? Yeah, um, just to echo what um, Australia is saying here in New Zealand as well. Um, we have a lot of students from China that haven't been able to join us because uh, they either were accepted to the university right before COVID and then weren't able to travel or various reasons. But, um, and especially with China, they have certain blocks on the online resources that they can use. And so we tried to connect with them in ways that uh, we could help them get resources, either if it was through our online library or things that could be useful for them, not just um, related to you know travel or tourism, but related to their needs. And that definitely increased our membership because we went outside of just the direct focus of tourism and travel, but also what could help students abroad. Um, and for during COVID, even though we couldn't host um, official events at the university, we tried to do more networking events. So we went to the museum, 
when we were allowed to do that, um, obviously social distancing, but that was you know, to promote the culture of New Zealand as well to the new students. And then we would take photos and videos and send them to the students that were overseas um, and couldn't join us physically. So that was a way of getting them engaged. And um, whenever we had any online speakers, we would create Zoom links and send them uh, to all the, all the members across the board. But I do like the idea of WhatsApp from India. I think that's definitely, that's way easier. I think any informal, for, like any informal path of communication makes people more relaxed and, um, you know, probably more tempted to join. So yeah, I thought that was a good idea. And adding on a little, I'm sorry. So one of the things we've done is to in, uh, increase the participation in more formal events is we add it as a part of our curriculum. So we have specific hours each month where we host an event. So for example, on bi-weekly basis, we allocate one hour where we get all the members together. So we collab, uh, we inform our professors well in advance about the events. So the students get the attendance for the lectures and they do not skip any hours. I think that's something all the students would definitely want. Thank you. And I also want to add something like uh, what our uh, uh, chapter has done is we have like a monthly like newsletters. It's more like a direct marketing things because we think students uh, like for students, they have to check their education um, mailbox like frequently. So actually we think compared with um, their personal emails or personal mailbox, uh, we are trying to connect with them via the education mailbox. And then this kind of like the newsletters thing is kind of overview or like um, preview of what is going to happen and what we have done. So this could help um, the students like kept in the loop, they know what we have done. Maybe they could get some interesting like, things or events uh, they would like to join in the future. So I think the newsletter would be a very good thing. That is very direct and it's like a person to person communication and in the email. So I would recommend that to stay connected with students. That's Thank a really you. good idea, having that um, electronic direct mail as another point of contact. Um, so I have a question for you guys. Um, and this has been something that I've wanted to do for a long time. I think I just have no courage to do. Um, and it. so I'm going to ask you a question. And uh, if you if the answer is yes, raise your hand, okay? So I can see. So how many of you have used Discord? Discord server. If you have raised, if you're using Discord right now, please raise your hand. I want to see how many of you guys use Discord. Okay, not many. Huh? <laughs> okay, so I asked that question because uh, I want I wanted to find a, a platform where we can also interact casually. It doesn't have to be so formal. Every time I do a networking session, it tends to be a little bit more formal. Um, but I wanted a platform where we can interact casually with each other, be able to reach out to each other and everything. That's something that our community sorely needs. So it looks like it might not be Discord because I think I only saw five hands up out of the 26 of you. Uh, but we are just constantly looking for that perfect platform to really do it on. So um, can I ask another question? How many of you have WhatsApp and are willing to do the WhatsApp thing with me? I have so many more hands now. Okay, that's great. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you so much. That was a really informal poll because I didn't prepare to ask you guys that question today. <laughs> So thank you. We will, um, my, for me and the Pada Youth team that is working on it, we will do our best to find uh, our community the perfect platform to uh, communicate on and connect on. Um, or we might just come to the realization that there is no perfect platform. But yes. Okay, so we have time for one more question. Does anyone have another question from our audience or from 
uh, the student chapter leaders, do you guys want to talk anything? Up? Do you want to, I don't know, questions? Um, I have yes. a question. Oh, oh. So we face the issue of encouraging a lot of junior members to take on the role. So how are other student chapters dealing with this issue of encouraging the junior members in your chapter? Uh, so for us, as uh, Haley was uh, like was doing the uh, presentation, she mentioned we have like a rotation things. So it's more about a mentor things as well because we'll assign the new sub executive um, member to a higher position people. Uh, for example, if we got an assistant, and we would like assign them to different department. So maybe the first four weeks is the marketing, and then we will track um, like. Uh, her or his experience, we would ask like, how do you, how are you feeling with this, um, like with this job and how are you feeling if you need to change to another place or another sector? And if that person is okay with that, we would say, if you want to stay in this um, sector, we are very happy. And um, I think that is also the main part of leadership. So we have to, you know, like let the higher, uh, higher position people to, to teach, to teach the new, like to teach the juniors, because uh, as they are new people to the to the new, uh, you know, like a new group, so they will be feel sometimes feel like uh, disoriented or something. So we have to give them like support and to teach them how to get into the staff. So yeah, that is what we done. We have done in our chapter. And just to add to that, to get them in the first place, we usually. Um... We usually get our teachers in our degree to post something to our um, uni page and reminding them that we are like we are a student chapter which they can join and so that um, that's how they originally find out about us and then word of mouth usually we do a lot of marketing trying to get especially first and second years in I'm sure you guys um, are all very aware um, but yeah we usually go through our teachers to try and get our, the name of our, our student chapter out to the first years. Okay, thank you for those answers. And honestly, it's really great to use all your resources that includes your teachers, your lecturer advisors, uh, to get them to push for registration and for membership. Um, does anyone else have an uh, answer that you want to suggest? Um, hello? Hi! Okay, so um, what we do with our organization since we have mentioned um, before during the previous roundtables that we have around 400 members. So what we actually do is from the core group of the organization, the leaders, we actually eliminate the positions. We don't take the work as to what our positions are. Like we have to be inclusive. We show them how the work is done. So from the, maybe if you see the rankings of the officers, maybe you would say that the president is the, or the chairperson is on top. But what you have to do is to immerse yourself, to reach out to your um, core group, that um, whatever you are doing, you have to also teach them so that they can adapt whatever the organization is up to. And this also goes a long way with the members. When they see that your organization is working as a family, where you get to have equal treatment, like regardless of the position or the workload, um, they get to be enticed and it is easier to have them join your organization. I think that's one of the reasons that's why we are um, having a growing population of members. That's I think very interesting because uh, what we try doing is for every event, we at least have a minimum of two junior members. So they are not part of the core team or the executive team. So we at least take two junior members to take on the leader's role. So they act as the event head or the chairperson's role for each event. But that also has given us a chance where students are really shy and they do not want to take that role. So thanks, that helps. Amazing. Okay, Ken. So today has been such a good opportunity for us to learn from each other. I think student chapters face very unique, <laughs> specific problems to student chapters alone. Um, and it's really great to just have this opportunity to be able to gather, to be able to learn from each other and everything. So I 
going to end the session now. And um, amazing, everybody. We've really done this exactly on time. It's been a great session for um, the Pada Youth Symposium to end on this high note. I think the energy that you guys bring to each, every single presentation that we did today and to this discussion has been so good. And every time I do a youth event, you guys really bring the energy and you guys really just um, make it worthwhile. Right? All the hard work that we as the Pada Youth team puts into these events, you guys make it so worthwhile for us. So um, I know I keep saying that everyone's presentation is amazing and I honestly don't want you to think that I'm insincere, like that I have nothing else to say. I genuinely think that you guys have done such an amazing job throughout this entire global pandemic to keep going, to keep pushing your passion projects forward, to learn new skills and everything. I am absolutely blown away by the impact and the, the positive uh, change that you guys have done during your year as student chapter leaders. If you have been paying attention to the presentations just now, we had everything from like cross-culture exchange programs to like um, sustainability projects that were on campus to like marine conservation projects um, to food waste webinars and there were fundraising projects that you guys did. The webinars that the student chapter community as a whole done literally covered every single sector of the industry to the point where I'm just like, do I, do I still need to do webinars anymore? I, maybe I don't because you guys are doing the webinars and you guys are really delivering top quality content. So we, and it's also such a joy to be able to see the different activities that are happening all over the world based on, of course, the different situations that our different countries and destinations are in as we face COVID-19. So for some of you guys, you guys are purely virtual. Um, for some of you guys, you guys can start tinkering with hybrid events. And for others, it it's really great that um, lockdown has been lifted and you guys can do in-person events again. So just being able to see that there are so many different types of events happening really give us hope um, that uh, one day we will be able to <laughs> meet in person, hopefully one day soon, maybe, hopefully. Um, but I think just looking at everything that you guys have done, there are so many ideas out there. You guys have been so creative. Um, it's, it's just amazing. It blows my mind. And uh, it's very, very clear that you have learned a whole ton of new skills. You guys have proved that you are adaptable and resilient. And, you, and we always say youth is the future. Right? Youth is the future of tourism. You guys are seriously the future. And the future is very clearly resilient. The future is very passionate. And the future is going to be bright. So um, I just wanted to uh, end on one more note um, that I wanted to say congratulations to uh, Pata Singapore Tomasic Poly Student Chapter for being our elected representative as a student chapter for our entire community. You guys are going to actually sit on the Pata board uh, and join board meetings and be a voice for the student chapter community and the Pata youth community. So thank you very much for taking up that responsibility and that honor. I am very proud of you guys. And um, that is something that is new. It's something that is, has never happened before. We've never had a student chapter represent our entire community on the Pata board and have a seat on the Pata board to be a voice for our community. So I'm very excited to see where that brings us next. Um, it's great that Pata is being, uh, is changing and adapting and being more inclusive and having all these voices included in the Pata board. So I'm really glad for that. Uh, okay, so, um, can I have my slides please? Um, so this actually brings us very sadly to the end of our youth symposium. It has been an absolutely amazing journey. What we have coming up next for the Pata youth community is this IGLTA uh, and Pata collaboration for the Building Bridges Fellowship. This is a 
this is an event-based sponsorship where we sponsor one youth to travel to attend the IGLTA annual global convention. Uh, this is in support of the next generation of LGBTQ plus travel professionals and allies. The deadline to apply is 15 June. So please, um, if you think this is an opportunity that you want to grab hold of, please uh, click that link and apply today. So to never miss out on an opportunity like Pata IGLTA Building Bridges Fellowship, make sure you join us as, a, uh, as an individual member to the Pata Youth uh, community. Um, membership is free. Uh, once you join us, we actually send emails and all these opportunities directly to your email inbox so you will never miss out on the opportunity. We are all FOMO here, so it's good to join us as a part of youth and be part of our database. And honestly, um, Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for making this Pada Youth Symposium a success. I couldn't have done it without you guys, and you guys are really the only reason why I am here in the first place. So thank you so much to our student chapter leaders for an amazing roundtable discussion today uh, and all the presentations. I think it is absolutely, um, it, it really blew my mind. I think the impact of our community is so clear and I'm so happy to be the Pada Youth Ambassador. Um, of course, shout out to Ras Alkaima, sorry, go back, go back. Shout out to Ras Alkaima, our platinum sponsor for PES 2021, as well as the Global Tourism Economy Forum, who is our goal sponsor. It's thanks to our sponsors um, and their support that we were able to make Pata Annual Submit free for all. I also want to thank our Pata Youth sponsors, who are five companies who really supported us throughout the global pandemic, continue to support us till today. They are iFree Group, Guam Visitors Bureau, Met2 Ventures, Sigmund, and Talent Basket. Without their support, we wouldn't be the part of youth program that we are today. I really, really, really appreciate them. So next is our... Um, the QR code slide, yes. So we have a survey um, and this is a visitor survey for everyone who joined us at the Pata Annual Submit. Please scan the QR code, um, like now take out your phone, scan the QR code, do it, do it, do it, and answer this survey. Honestly, we need uh, survey answers so that we can do better in the future. So please help us to help you to serve you better by answering this survey. It's really important to us. Thank you so much for your support, guys. Um, also, since we are at the end of this youth symposium, I welcome all feedback and constructive criticism and testimonials. So if you have anything to say, if you have a testimonial to give, feel free to give it in the comments. And um, thank you. That, that's, that's the end, uh, that's the wrapper of this entire thing. Of course, uh, once again, I am Alethea, the Pada Youth Ambassador. I'm very blessed to be the Pada Youth Ambassador. My email address is ytp at pada.org, where I'm happy to assist you uh, if you have any questions or if you would like to collaborate. And once again, thank you. I think uh, everyone's still online, everyone. It's great, it's great. We have come to the end of our youth symposium. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for being here together with me. Bye. Okay. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye, guys.